Hi everyone, welcome back to Nasidyanka. In this episode 16, part 2, I'm going to talk to you about an article which I translated and which was uh, once again uh, published um, by Bulgarian Patriarchy, Orthodox Christian Patriarchy. It is on the spouses. As I've mentioned before, this is the channel where I talk about Bulgarian history, culture, tradition and faith. And if you're not interested in this, or if it is somehow triggering to you, you don't have to um, stay through the rest of this video, right? Um, on the contrary, if you're interested, please feel free to um, subscribe to my channel, because in this channel I will talk about strictly Orthodox Christian concerns regarding Orthodox Christian marriage and family. And this was as uh, per some of you's requests uh, to discuss this topic. So, this is on the spouses. It was published by the Holy Metropolia of the city of Lovich in January 2013. And as usual, I am including the um, resources in the comments section. So feel free to refer to that, please. An amazing thing, says Saint Chikon. Amazing and at the same time deserving of pity. Where else, at first glance, could there be love more sincere than the love between a man and a woman? By way of nature alone, a man loves his father and mother. But the Holy Scripture says, A man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. Genesis 2.24 Therefore, a husband and a wife are one flesh in the words of the Holy Scripture. And logically, who would be at enmity with his flesh? Here is a side note. Even people, people who negatively talk about their bodies, subconsciously their bodies betray them in a way, so to speak, by forcing them to survive each time they try to fight their own flesh and nature. That is how humans are created. No one ever, in fact, hates his flesh. This is evident in the fact that humans strive to feed and, worms and, and worm it. This comes from Ephesians 5, 29. Again, in a little note here I wanted to add. In other words, people complain of discomfort because they want their flesh, their physical being, their physical body to be comfortable. People complain of loneliness and hurt, and indeed, emotions are finer manifestations of the flesh, impulses, energies, just consider that. And yet, look at many enmities, grudges, and quarrels that there are sometimes between those two people, the spouses, who are so closely connected with each other. This is in fact precisely the devil's cunning way of working. Wherever he sees more genuine love, there he applies more diligence to destroy the union of love and to sow his enmity or distortion. And how much harm is caused by this? There are no words to describe it. So how can this evil be avoided? Let us notice and hear the wise instructions of the same saint. The man, he says, is obligated to love his wife. You husbands love your wives and apostle, the apostle teaches. And as an example, he cites Christ himself, the Son of God, who loves his church. This comes from Ephesians 5.25. The wife is bound not only to love her husband, but also to submit to him. Side note. And we have spoken more um, about healthy obedience. Um, or submission versus unhealthy obedience and submission in episode um, in a previous episode I believe it was 14 or 13 I think it was 14 part 3 as well as in episode 13 though so feel free to refer to my old videos um, you can recognize them by the title um, also uh, Colossians uh, three eighteen say you wives submit to your husbands as it is fitting in the Lord so bo both are responsible or obligated or instructed for uh, observing and practicing fidelity to each other to keep the conjugal bed unblemished. For it is said that marriage is an honorable thing among all and the marriage bed clean. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. This comes from Hebrews 13 um, verse 4. 
And so marriage is something honest and noble among all married couples. And the marriage, the marital bed um, is something clean. Um, and uh, I just wanted to mention this because I'm trying to translate here for you guys from the Bulgarian language. Some things are harder to translate. Until death itself, neither the man can leave the woman nor the woman the man. As they promised each other before God, so they are bound to remain inseparable until death. The Holy Scripture reminds us. Here are the main responsibilities of a man and a woman according to the instructions of Saint Chikon. The man to love his wife, to obey, and the woman to obey her husband, and both to be faithful to each other. Here's a side note. The man is only told to love, but not to obey, because the man is the head of the woman, just as Christ is the head of the church. This comes from Ephesians 5, verse 23. And the woman is told, love and obey, because the Holy Apostle also commanded, I do not allow a woman to teach or rule over a man. This comes from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. And here is another quote by Saint Chikon, who says that even now, let the woman not be ashamed to call her husband master if she wants to be the daughter of the Holy Sarah. Here is a note I will add to you guys, for you guys. Um, in Western culture, we tend to view obedience as something archaic, even sick. However, I invite you, heartfully, to reconsider this. I challenge you. Are we not all obedient to a certain thing? Be it the rules of a society or the rules of a school or program or a job's policies and procedures that each of us inevitably follows in this life and age? So well then, back to my episode 13, where I spoke about healthy versus unhealthy obedience, feel free to refer to it because ultimately the choice is, is yours. Who do you choose to obey and what is your higher purpose? What is your core value? These are the very things that Orthodox Christianity refers to right here. When a woman is married to a man who is a true protector, she's safe with him. This obedience here refers to receiving his safety and the choice to marry this particular man is her personal choice. We in Orthodox Christianity do not force people to marry that would that is not Christian. It's not Orthodox. So to obey a brute, however, is wrong because um, it means that you, or in this case, the woman that we're talking about, um, has not discerned the right source of obedience. Um, if I obey a murderer, <laughs> just supposedly, I expose the whole of society to danger, the whole of my family to danger, the whole of my body and the parts that constitute my body to danger. If I obey a meek and safe person, on the other hand, I ensure the safety of my future generations, the safety of my body cells, of every single living organism that constitutes this body that makes up me. And so think about this. The choice is yours. This is what the Orthodox Christian Church teaches by free will and by revealing to us the nature of humankind. So I'm saying this because I'm very aware that some Protestant denominations, even um, Catholics and other religions and other religions will jump up right away here and say, oh, look how we are subjugating women. We're making them look like trash and lowly. And this is wrong. It's not at all what the Orthodox Christian Church has ever taught. And um, that's why I want to bring your attention to this. And I challenge you. I truly challenge you. Think about what free will is. Think about what discernment is. Think about what core values are. And come back to what I just mentioned. No woman and no man has ever been forced to marry within the Orthodox Church. This is a personal choice. And this person, woman or man, has the um, responsibility, the accountability to check in with their senses, 
to discern this other person, to be mature enough to make a choice that's personal. This is different from what we watch in uh, movies and Hollywood media and propaganda that talk to us about how this uh, male supremacy somehow rules over women. This is not what the Orthodox Church ever taught, period. And so this is how the order of relations between a man and a woman has been established by God himself, our creator, within the holy Orthodox Christian tradition. And there is no happier than the, ha the family, none other that's happier than the family uh, which, uh, in which this order is observed, uh, where the husband loves his wife and the, wa the wife loves her husband and obeys him because he is the protector, he's a safe presence, and she, she takes care of the hearth of the family, where both live in perfect harmony so that there is not a single domestic work nor chore that does not get to be decided upon by the truth common council. Both sorrow and grief and joy, both mis misfortune and happiness, everything then is shared equally by the two in this couplehood, or coupleship if you would say that. Who doesn't know that sorrow confided to a close friend is only half the sorrow? Uh, this is a Bulgarian proverb, Bulgarian saying. And a joy shared with a kindred person is already a double joy. And so what closer friend can a husband have if not a wife and vice versa, a wife, if not a man, a husband, who can be closer and more related to a wife than a husband? Happy is the man to whom God has sent a virtuous wife. It is more expensive than any pearls. This comes from Proverbs. Chapter 31, verse 10. Happy is the family in which husband and wife live in mutual love. This family is blessed by the Lord. Here's a side note. In the Bulgarian language, the word for man and husband is often one and the same. We say mush, which can translate as man, but we also use the same word for a husband. Mush, sopruk, but mush also stands for husband. As well as the word for the woman and wife. They can be interchangeable. Jena, sopruga. Whenever we say jena, we also mean sopruga, wife. So it is one and the same. However, we do have another word, like I just mentioned, which stands for spouse. And we conjugate for the masculine, for the feminine, for the plural. Sopruk, sopruga, sopruzi. Um, and it stands, stands for spouse. Male spouse, female spouse, and multiple spouses, of course, the two together. Language being one of the oldest traces of our culture can directly hint to the depth of the meaning of what we are discussing here. The Orthodox Christian relationship or union between two spouses. That's what this I wanted to kind of bring your attention to. So as soon as this order of relating to each other and which has been established by God himself between husband and wife is broken, however, in the family, one can no longer expect good, expect good nor happiness within the family. Side note, this relates only equally, uh, I'm sorry, this relates equally to spouses, um, uh, to any spouses um, to abuse the authenticity of the faith. Um, if one deceives, lies, hides secrets, abuses, perverts reality, gaslights, and so forth and so forth, then that person is no longer acting as a part of the whole. And therefore, naturally, by way of logic in nature, the bond cannot endure nor expect any joy, peace, calm, and mutual respect to understanding, because these are not Christian characteristics. And so... This order gets broken when either the woman takes the upper hand over the man, this is abuse of power, or the man tyrannies over the woman, again, abuse of power. Also, this refers to a situation where, despite all of the prudence of the man, now, in Bulgarian language, this word is blagurazumie, and blagu comes from grace, Razum is reason. In other words, if you have grace within your reasoning, powers, prudence in this way, uh, the woman does not want to fulfill her duties and she opposes her husband in everything. That's an example. Here is a note. Or, the other way around, 
the husband neglects his wife's gentle and wise devotion and turns to other fantasies, it's also an example of neglect and abuse of power. The word, like I said, blagorazumie, or in English prudence, that's the best translation I was able to find, stems from grace-filled or meek and gentle and compassionate, reasonable, clarity of mind, and one-mindedness. All of these words in English really stand for blago rozumie. So whenever wife or husband strays from that one mindfulness, the balance of the union is disrupted. Hence, we observe many tragic marital problems nowadays in our society um, that by far has become quite um, impoverished spirituality. Something they are only physical beings um, and deny spirituality. Others, uh, so let me translate. I'm translating here for you guys. I'm reading this. So some some people think that they are only physical beings, and so those people end up denying spirituality. Other people think that husband and the wife are so highly elevated <laughs> that they fall into delusion. Our modern day and era is quite deplorable in this way. Um, but that doesn't mean that all is lost, because clearly um, the wisdom of the Holy Fathers has been preserved in its purity. And the Holy Orthodox Church does keep that holy and sane. And so in reality, this is what kind of home is built where the woman, as they say, commands over the man and the man is recklessly ready to fulfill her every whim. In other words, people-pleasing behaviors, passive behaviors. How pitiful it is to see such a man. He loves her madly and pleases her madly and everything, but this mad love only harms both him and her. She becomes wayward and capricious, and he becomes simply a servant of his wife. She is, an, she is his idol. He dares not take a step or speak a word without her permission. The wife meddles and imposes her will in all of his affairs, not only domestic, but also official, social, although she does not understand anything about those affairs. But the men dare not contradict her. Um, in other words, he is afraid of healthy confrontation. There is no vulnerability here. He is afraid of her harsh look. He trembles at her harsh words. The children see all of this and stop respecting their father. And the mother stands be before, behind them like a mountain and covers all their misdemeanors, their tantrums, uh, their mm, naughty, naughty behaviors and nonsense. Whoa, it is truly a pity, a deplorable situation to such a soft-spoken man, such a passive man. Woe to the whole family in this situation. And by the way, the exact same vicious cycle occurs when the husband or man as I have observed in Western society, coerces and manipulates um, to his own gains. It happens when the wife or woman begins to enable his irrational behaviors, ready to fulfill his every whim. It happens when both manipulate each other. How pitiful it is to see such a wife or such a woman. She loves him madly and pleases him madly in everything by submitting to his irrational and unhealthy desires, but this mad love only harms both her and him. He becomes crooked and cruel and manipulative, and she becomes simply a servant um, of, of, of the husband. He turns into her idol, and she dares not take a step nor speak a word without his, without his permission, so she loses her voice, opinion, choice, freedom. The husband obsesses, imposes, and rules over her will, in all of her affairs, um, opinions, likes and dislikes, although he does not understand anything about her, and he obviously lacks emotional intelligence. But the wife does not dare contradict him. Once again, here we have no healthy confrontation, no healthy vulnerability, no honest connection. So she is afraid of his harsh look. She trembles at his harsh words and deeds. She becomes invisible, silent, and worthless. Completely contrary to God's intention, which is to elevate men and women 
to be rulers, to be kings and queens of this world. This is something many modern people have no idea about. Think about that. So, a person ridden by so much guilt, fear, anger, shame, and masking cannot rule over anything. Such a person truly loses a sense of center, identity, power, or control. That is why the two end up in the vortex of a negative cycle, and it drains their couplehood. Wait, because the article rightfully addresses the other part, the man's fault too, in a few minutes. So the article tells us what are the consequences. Would you like to discover how far this type of chaos, the overturning of the order established by God himself, can get? Reminder, uh, remember <laughs> Solomon, that wisest of the wise kings, because of the whims of his wives, he built idolatrous shrines in his capital and himself offered sacrifices to idols. Rem remember Herod who did not dare to refuse his wife. Of course, he knew well that the daughter was begging, misled, taught by her mother. And what was it? It's scary to say. The head of the greatest of the prophets is what she wanted. Remember, finally, the thousands of examples when children spoiled and prompted by the folly of their mother have chased away their own father from home. As a side note, I have many such personal examples. Unfortunately, when people lose track of God, they lose sanity. They lose a sense of balance. But our article informs us that, in fact, the opposite also happens, like I mentioned a little bit earlier. It happens that a man almost does not consider his wife as a person. He goes on a drunken rampage um, and now... Who should he show authority to? To the woman? <laughs> um, here the Bulgarian words literally translate to the behaviors when a husband um, or a man loses control and takes out his anger to his wife, partner, woman. So in this case, this person, this man, didn't succeed at his work. Again, he blames the woman. Both for some reason and for no reason, whatever the reason he makes up, the poor woman is beaten and insulted. Whether that's physical, sexual, emotional, mental, she suffers his abuse of power. The insane, we say bezumen, bezumen in Bulgarian means one who is bez without um mind. He has lost his mind. So this insane man who has lost his mind, his reasoning mind, um, thinks this way. He'll, he says to himself, I'll do with my wife whatever I want, and that's what I'll do. So, how much pain such a sufferer endures, the woman, right? How much she has to endure silently, only God knows. And when you think that this is done within, within a Christian family, among Christian people, it makes you feel ashamed in front of some other denominations, whether that's the Jewish, the Hebrew, who treat their wives better than such, you know, Christians, it brings up questions, and I've heard people bring those questions up. Um, one good Orthodox Christian priest taught this way. He said, my friends, the woman and, or the wife is not at all the slave of the man slash the husband, but she is his friend. She is his helper according to the Lord's appointment. Therefore, shouldn't the man or the husband treat her like a friend equal to him? The woman was created by God purposefully from the rib of the man. What does that mean? Therefore, not the woman, but ourselves, we men, this priest says, stain by humiliating the woman and against ourselves, against our own flesh and blood, we rise or we rebel in such cases. More than that, your wife is the mother of your own children, if you have children. By beating, by abusing, by neglect and humiliation, you humiliate her in their eyes. And you humiliate yourself. That was this priest's message. So she was given to you by God himself. And you, in front of the whole church, promised to love her 
to the grave. She is as much a partaker of the gifts of the Holy Spirit as you are. She is a member of the church as you are. And she is your co-heir in the kingdom of heaven. And you beat and torture and abuse her, the co-heir of Christ? But she deserves it, you will say. Some people mindlessly raise up their voices. And in that case... This article reminds us, don't you deserve God to punish you every hour for your iniquities? You have forgotten how many times you robbed your family, drinking away or squandering off the family fortune? Have you forgotten about your own, your own sense of infidelity to your own wife, to your own beloved? And again, this priest tells us, you say, but she's quarrelsome, svadliva, as we say in Bulgarian language. And the priest reminds those men and you, have you always been kind to her, and have you tried to correct her with kindness and compassion? He continues speaking to the public. He says, you say she's stupid. And he says to the men, and you, are you smart, thinking of using beatings to make her wise? Saint Apostle Paul exhorts, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. This comes from Colossians Chapter 3, verse 19. Saint Apostle Peter teaches, Love prudently, blagorazumno, as we would say, with your wives, and give them honor as a weaker vessel, as joint heirs of the gracious life. This comes from 1 Peter chapter 3, line 7. Little note here, um, the weaker vessel means the gentler, the sensitive, the fragile Truly, it is an ex extremely easy. Um, it is extremely easy for a man to hurt a woman if he loses control. Not that the other does not occur the other way around, uh, but the very nature of violence and abuse involves a very intimate internal damage, and men by nature possess this power. So yes, they are responsible for learning how to tame that power that is given to them if their physical attributes um, explicitly possess that. Uh, once again, I don't want to put everybody under the same denominator because I'm very, very aware of terrible abuses that have unfortunately happened to men as well. And this is wrong, not Christian. So much like a mother has much more power over her child and she can easily harm that child, Yes, she is responsible for her child's safety and well-being. So there is a hierarchy or some type of order when we consider how built we are and how strong versus how gentle and weaker we can be. In many different ways, human beings have limitations. So let's continue here. I'm going to make a little pause. So coming back to this article, um, it begs us to remember that before God, there is no male nor female. Look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. All are equal and of a higher status or position is the one who pleases him, the creator, God, more. So the one who pleases him more is of a higher status. Last though not least, it also happens sometimes that no matter how prudently a man may act, he can in no way establish order in the home. The woman interferes in everything even though she doesn't know how to do anything or she opposes the man in all kinds of matters or she doesn't want to do anything at all as in taking accountability for her deeds, for our deeds as human beings. Or she abandons the children and the household, leaving them primarily or mainly to the men. And therefore, she is mainly concerned with herself, with her beauty, with her looks, with material things, external things, um, affairs, interests, hobbies, opinions, it doesn't matter. Things that are outside of this family core. And how about the woman who also abuses drugs or alcohol, she loses control to maybe frivolent spending of money, 
um, and does not receive help for that and does not seek help for that, this is something that needs to be also taken to be taken under consideration. Again, it is clear that there is no longer any question of a good counsel here. Such a person cannot occupy a role of a reasonable, sane or one-minded advisor or equal for as long as they have fallen into this fogginess cycle of abuse. They need, they need help. They need healing. And so in Sirach 2518, it is said that indeed it is better to live with a lion and a dragon than to live with such a person. The unfortunate man endures and endures such a woman, but if he were to throw everything away, where would he go alone? To drown his heavy heart. So this article is begging and reminding us that no, um, we should not do this for, for Christ's sake. Uh, we shouldn't go there. We shouldn't lose our soul for another person. And I want to add here to clarify, we should not lose our soul for another human being, especially sacrificing ourselves to another human being who refuses to obtain help. This cross was sent to you by God and he himself bore a cross for you and us and how heavy it truly is. He wants us to be partakers of his sufferings. He, um, he sends heavy crosses to him whom he loves the Holy Scripture tells us. So we are advised to bear our cross patiently to the end, to not be afraid of its weight, because he who entrusted it to us will also help us, or he who entrusted it to you will also help you, for he is the merciful Lord. And who knows, maybe for your patience, he will also return your spouse to the path of salvation. Um, or maybe he will return your children on the path of salvation or help them grow on the path of salvation. Um, I think that it is good enough to mention here as a side note to notice that um, contrary to um, pretend Christian denominations which claim and fight that in families there should never be divorces, that if you marry you're stuck forever, this has never been the view in Orthodox Christianity. Um, this is also a huge reason why I abstain purposefully from uh, creating too many videos um, advising you guys about um, Orthodox Christian marriage and morale because it's not my role. This is the role of your personal spiritual father. You should go to your personal spiritual father, talk to him and discuss those matters and follow his advice. Um, all I can do in my best of capacity, so to speak, is uh, find out the words of other spiritual fathers and translate them for you, bridge them, which I am glad to do and I am very um, honored and humbled to do. Uh, but this being said, I really want to bring your attention to realizing that Orthodox Christianity being the first and original and authentic Christianity, um, religion, uh, it, it, it is not black and white. It is not, um, it is not corrupt. How could it be? It is not judgmental nor, um, what's the word? Um, hateful, abusive. Come on. How could it be? Orthodox Christianity is the place where people get healed. So as such, it teaches us meekness. It teaches us flexibility. It teaches us how to step out of the box of social norms and conditioning. So um, challenge and um, explore what Orthodox Christianity truly is. Um, because even though we know that a man and a, wife and a woman marry for life upon eternity, we also know that there are cases when one or the other spice is just not mature to the point where they can cause more harm to the other or more harm to the children. And this is a case where a priest can give a blessing for divorce, for separation. There are um, no black and white rules that fit in a, an Orthodox Christian uh, marriage. There are Orthodox Christians who live together and um, they have taken vows or they have come up 
to this, the mutual decision to not have children or to not have sexual relationships and there are those who engage in those of course um god has given that to us for a reason not just for procreation by the way and i will create more um videos on that but for mere so for salvation number one salvation is number one reason to do whatever you do in orthodoxy so if you marry but you cannot live in a way that will save your soul and your spouse's soul what's the point of marriage if you live alone uh as a single person and you cannot live a life that's going to save your soul what's the whole point of this if you become a monastic and again you cannot live the life that's going to save your soul what's the whole point of this so um be careful when you read resources and you make decisions and um please remember that orthodox christianity has absolutely nothing to do with any so-called christian denominations i mean it and um although i respect every human being on earth my heart cringes because i know that there have been many deceptions and misunderstandings that sent people into agony and undue pain and so with this i'm going to wrap up here thank you for watching another one of my videos i hope that this brings some clarity and flexibility and richness to your souls um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel please feel free to subscribe if you're interested in further videos and please remember to talk to an orthodox christian spiritual father if you have particular personal questions with regards to how you should live your life or uh, marriage or uh, moral morality and so forth uh, an orthodox a good orthodox christian father who is not an ecumenist <laughs> don't look into heresies please but who is not an ecumenist who is clear and honest and he follows the orthodox christian tradition clearly would be able to help you with that so i hope that you have a great rest of the day and the week and i will um make sure to follow up with more videos of this sort i appreciate you i thank you for your interest and yeah we'll see each other soon bye bye thank you